this is awful. What? I can't stand to read about current events anymore. It's just one depressing thing after another. Uh, what are you reading about? Leather jumpsuits. <laughs> Everyone says they're in this year, and it just makes me sick. Well, it's a brutal world, Stephanie, but we can't let it keep us from our dusting. <laughs> right. Morning. Dick, I just did something by accident, and I feel terrible about it. What is it? I opened all of your mail. <laughs> you opened all of this by accident? It was put in my box by mistake, but I didn't read any of it. All I looked at was one thing from a record club. I'm really sorry about it. Well, it's okay, I guess. So, are you going to join the record club? I doubt it. Wise move, considering the size of your electric bill. Kirk, there's smoke coming from your cafe. Ooh, guess it's time to flip those burgers. People, go back in. It's not a fire. It's just a little smoke. Dick, I picked up a copy of The Times for you. Did you get my loofah sponges? Yeah. Thanks. Loofah sponges? It's beauty night. I set aside one night a week to maintain myself. What do you use them for? Well, I use them to, to scrub away dead, dry skin. Do you want to try one? No. No, I, uh, I have someone come in once a week to do that. <laughs> so, uh, how are things in town? Great. I ran into Mrs. Wanamaker at the drugstore, and she invited the two of us to a community potluck tonight. Well, maybe sometime we'll do that. I thought we'd do that tonight. What's a potluck? Oh, it's a big mass dinner where people bring food they wouldn't serve at home. You know, <laughs> down into a dingy church basement and sit around on folding chairs and eat off paper plates. That sounds horrible. It sounds horrible the way he describes it. I think it sounds like fun. You don't want to go, do you? Joanna, you know I don't like that kind of stuff. But Dick, it's a chance to make friends. And it's so New England. No, it's not. We had potluck dinners in New York, and I didn't like them there, either. You never want to go anywhere. Yes, I do. No, you don't. And you know why? Because you don't like people. <laughs> I, I do, too, like people. No, you don't. You'd rather sit around in a torn T-shirt watching television and swilling beer. <laughs> I never do that. I certainly hope not. <laughs> Look, Dick, if you don't want to go, we won't go. I'll just call Mrs. Wanamaker and tell her to count us out. You don't have to do that. You're just saying that to pacify me. That's true. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go anywhere just to be pacified. If we're both not going to enjoy it, I think we should just forget it. Dora, uh, Joanna, I just talked to Dick, and we can't wait to come tonight. <laughs> in the room. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> Ready to go? Now, come on, honey. You promise to at least pretend to have a good time. I will. Joanna! Uh, come on in. I'm so glad you and Dick could make it. Well, it was nice of you to invite us. Well, I always say no one should miss out on one of our potlucks. What's that casserole you got there, Joanna? That looks pretty exotic. Tuna. Oh. Well, I always say, can't have a good potluck without four or five tuna casseroles. I'll put it with the others. Here, let me take your coats. Oh, thank you. Oh, Shirley, come out here. I want you to meet my wife. Shirley, this is Dick and Joanna Loudon. How do you do? It's nice to meet you. I'll put these on the table over there. I feel I know you already. I've heard so much about you. Oh, uh, really? Well, you can't live in a town this size and own the Stratford Inn and not have people talk about you. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> what do you do, Dick? I'm, I'm a writer. A writer? Isn't that interesting? Where are you from? New York. The Big Apple, huh? <laughs> Shirley, could you help me for a minute? Oh, excuse me. It's so nice to finally meet the people I've heard so much about. <laughs> How does it feel to be a celebrity? Uh, fine. <laughs> well, are you having fun so far? Well, I am. <laughs> I 
think it's just wonderful the way the whole community gets together like this. There seems to be so much warmth and fellowship. Okay, everybody, dig in. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, so much for the warmth and fellowship. <laughs> hey, Dick, you should write a book about our potluck dinners. You could call it Vittles of Vermont. Right. I have never seen so much food in all my life. It, doesn't it all look wonderful? <laughs> can't wait to go back for seconds. I'm going to have to get some of these recipes. <laughs> Uh, pardon me. I'm a bit confused. Oh? What's wrong? Well, the women are all going into the kitchen and the men are all staying out here. Maya? Well, why aren't we all eating dinner together? Oh, we never eat together. Why not? I don't know. It's just a tradition. <laughs> a tradition? Yes, you see, when this all started back in the 1800s, the farmers used to come into town to sell the crops. Women will cook up some food, bring it over to the men, then go back to the house and go on about their business. And it stayed pretty much the same all these years. The men sit out here and talk about hunting and fishing, and the women go in the kitchen and talk about whatever it is women talk about. Yeah, we like it. But do the women like it? Oh, and they haven't heard any complaints. Women feel at home in the kitchen, don't they? But that, 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 that's, that, that's, that's very interesting. Your, your tradition, I mean. Well, the important thing is, everybody has a good time. Dick, I don't think I like this. What, what are you talking about? Well, I'm not going to be packed off to eat in some hot, steamy kitchen while you sit out here with the men. Honey, uh, remember, I didn't want to come here in the first place. <laughs> I mean, as long as we're here, I don't think we can leave. I don't want to have a scene in front of all these people. Well, I don't care about a scene. Well, I do, so please, just... Go in the kitchen. <laughs> Better get over here, Dick. Jim's gonna tell his best fishing story. Oh, I don't want to miss that. <laughs> Maybe we'll get together later for coffee. <laughs> Isn't this great, Dick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stephanie? Stephanie? Well, here, I'll, I'll check you in. Do you like the morning sun or the afternoon sun? We're only going to be here one night. Do you like the moon? Really, anything is fine. Then I'll just get you something close to the stair. Where are you folks from? Florida. It's just lovely there. Oh, you've been? No. <laughs> the room is $35. And that includes breakfast, and you can pay when you check out. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. George? It's me. <laughs> George, it's Stephanie. I'm going back up to my room. Promise me you won't leave again. Why do you look like that? It's my beauty treatment. Good luck. <laughs> Joanna, will you please calm down? You still haven't answered my question. I have no idea why you were born female. That's not the question I'm talking about. Evening. Oh, hi, George. How was the dinner? Great, if you enjoy being treated like an indentured servant. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. How could you allow that to happen tonight? Honey, there was nothing I could do about it. I think that somewhere in your subconscious you enjoy seeing the women sent off to the kitchen. I can't believe you're this upset about what happened tonight. And if the truth were known, you're probably upset about something much bigger than being sent to the kitchen with the women. Like what? Well, like the fact that no one liked your casserole. <laughs> oh, how dare you! How dare you take a subject that I feel this strongly about and try to minimize it by claiming that it's something as meaningless as whether or not people like my casserole. Besides, they all had weeks to prepare something, and I only had a few hours. Fine. Huh. Didn't realize it bothered you so little. That's right, Dick. Sarcasm is so attractive. Joanna, can we talk about this tomorrow? It's late, and I'm tired. I'm not. I know you're not. Look, I'm not trying to be unreasonable. 
But it's demeaning to be sent off to the kitchen like that. It's like saying we're not important enough to sit at the men's table and join their conversation. Well, I'm just as capable of talking about hockey ball as any of you guys. Hockey ball? Sports, you know what I mean. Oh, Dick, what frustrates me more than anything is that I felt like I was the only person there who was bothered by it. Well, honey, I was bothered as much as you were. And if you hadn't been in the kitchen, you would have heard me bring it up. What did you say? I said... So, so the women sit in the kitchen, huh? Thank you, Dudley Do-Right. But honey, I'm on your side in this, but when something has been going on this long, it's hard to change it. And therefore, I should just turn my back on it? Well, it's, it's a festering social problem. It's just a potluck. Dick, if I thought everybody was happy with this, I'd drop it. But I'm not convinced these people realize they have a choice. Maybe all they need is for someone to challenge the tradition. Is this going to involve a lot of painting of signs and banners and women marching around town? Don't worry, Dick. I am not going to do anything to embarrass you in front of your precious male colleagues. Promise? <laughs> I was yelling to you as you were pulling into the driveway. I guess you didn't hear me. I guess not. Listen, as a gesture of friendship, and because I still feel so terrible about what happened yesterday, I thought I'd bring you your mail unopened. Thanks, Kurt. Ah, forget it. Oh, by the way, you got a postcard from your brother. He wants you to call him. Oh, hi, Dick. Glad we caught you in. Oh, hi, guys. We were wondering if we could talk to you for a few minutes. Sure, what's on your mind? Well, it's kind of personal, Dick. <laughs> oh, I get it. That means Kirk leave. Well, fine, I have more important things to do than hang around listening to gossip. Goodbye, Kirk. Details later, Dick. <laughs> well, why don't we uh, go in my study? Yes, well, thank you for your time. Goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just on the way out. Don't mind me. Uh, uh, hi, Joanna. Good to see you. Loved your casserole. Thank you. If you'll excuse me, I have some more calls to make. Oh, well, why don't you have a seat? Oh, what's, uh, what's on your mind? It's your wife, Dick. What about her? We think she's crazy. <laughs> Exactly. How do you mean that? Well, she's been calling the women in town. Seems she's not happy with the way we run our potlucks. Did you know that? She may have mentioned something like that. <laughs> Dick, we've been having this potluck for I don't know how many years. Nobody's ever complained before now. We love Joanna, but I can tell you we're not comfortable with change. This has all the earmarks of something radical. <laughs> we just happen to think when a problem comes up that we should confront it. Well, if, if you're that concerned, you can talk to Joanna. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> we thought we'd leave that up to you. Yeah. Well, I, I don't control Joanna. She pretty much has a mind of her own. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> but, I mean, if, if you're that concerned, um, I'll tell her you're upset, but that's about as far as I can go. Well, that's better than nothing. Well, we'd appreciate it, Dick. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot my phone list. Oh, that's all right. We were just on our way out. Yeah, good to see you again. Bye. Did I chase them off? No, no. They were leaving anyway. They wanted you to talk to me about the phone calls, right? Right. Did you tell them we have the kind of relationship where we don't tell each other what to do? Are you telling me that's what I should have told them? <laughs> well, why didn't they just talk to me? Because they're scared of you. Oh. I just got off the phone, and I can't believe it. Everyone in this town is scared. The men are scared of change, the women are scared of the men, and now everybody's scared of me. Oh, it's so silly. I'm not an ogre. I'm just an average, ordinary woman trying to drag a whole town into the 20th century. Well, honey, if, if the phone calls aren't working, why don't you just, you know, give up? I think maybe you're right. You do? I probably should give up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> What are you going to do? I don't know, but just wait till the next potluck. You're going to see a hundred years of tradition brought to its knees. <laughs> <laughs>
What's the matter? Nothing. I was just, just thinking. About what? About when you and I were first going out and everyone asked me what I liked best about you and I always said you were, you were fun. <laughs> They know we're here. <laughs> well, well, if it isn't the Loudons. Hi, Dick. Hi, Joanna. Hello. Is that your famous tuna casserole? No, chicken salad this time. Oh, oh boy, something different. Food's ready. Any time. Well, I better put this with everything else. We weren't sure we'd be seeing you two again. Sorry we got a little carried away the other day. Joanna just had us worried. Your wife is quite a rabble-rouser. <laughs> Dora has a little rebellious streak herself. Only last month, out of a clear blue sky, she came home with pierced ears. And, and I thought I had problems. <laughs> well, we'd better get in line if we want any food. Are you all right? I'm fine. Well, they really, really went for your chicken salad. It should make you feel good. Uh-huh. Everyone seems to be having an unusually good time tonight. Yes, they are. I wonder how long that's going to last. <laughs> Hurry up, Dick. You don't want your food to get cold. Well, I'll be sitting down now. All right. Saved your seat, Dick. Thanks. Did you get some of that free bean salad, Dick? Uh, I wasn't that hungry. I took two out of three. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. Yeah. Hi. Hi. This is it, isn't it? Chester, how's the golf game? Huh? Good. How's your game, Jim? Oh, uh, pretty good. <laughs> good. Catch any big fish lately? No. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Oh, for crying out loud, this is ridiculous. Uh, look, uh, I know what I've done, and I know why everybody's upset, but would it really be so horrible if we all ate out here together? I mean, these potlucks are supposed to be a chance for people to talk and get to know each other. So why should the men and women be separated? Now, let's be honest. Wouldn't you rather be eating out here if you had a choice? Well, how about you, Shirley? Well, I, I don't know. I've never thought about it. Well, think about it. Look, we could all be out here together talking about... Uh, well, I don't know what we talk about, but wouldn't that be better than keeping up some meaningless tradition? Yes. I guess I would like that better. You would? Yes. You know, it sounds like a good idea to me, too. It does. Well, it gets awful hot back there. When you think about it, there's no real reason we shouldn't eat in here. Good. Don't be afraid to change. <laughs> well, that doesn't. Let's move out here and stay out here. Oh, oh, that's it. It. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to shake things up like this, but after all, there's nothing wrong with a little progress. This is better. <laughs> See, that's one thing about progress. You can't always tell when it's happening. Well, I know 
know it's beauty night, but I'm so tired that instead of going through all that hassle, I think I'll just give myself a mud pack and a manicure, get a good 12 hours sleep. Leave it at that. <laughs> good night, George. Good night, Stephanie. Oh, hi, George. Hi. Well, how did it go? Pretty good. You know, I was really, uh, really proud of Joanna. She didn't think the women should be cooped up in the kitchen, and she said something about it, and I, I really think the potlucks are gonna be better from now on. Thanks, honey. Well, what are you gonna do now? Well, I think I'll go in the study and read. If you need me, I'll be in the kitchen. I'm not being stubborn, I'm just saying no. Why won't anybody in this inn ever do a favor for me? What, what are you guys talking about? I want to borrow George's truck and he won't let me. I won't let you because you're a terrible driver. You don't know that. You've never even ridden with me. Why do you need George's truck? I wrecked my car. <laughs> you're not getting my truck. And our friendship is over. Dick, give me your car. I can't. Uh, Joanna's at a community theater meeting. I promised I'd pick her up. Why do you need a car tonight anyway? Because I have a date, and I'd rather not pick her up on a bicycle. Well, if nobody needs me to do anything, I'm going to drive into town and try out my new sweater. How, how do you try out a new sweater? Well, you walk down the street and see if anybody asks you out. Mm. Can I give you a lift? Sure, thanks. Great. Mind if we use your car? <laughs> so Joanna's going to be in a play, huh? I guess. You know, I was in a play once. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a Christmas pageant. I played a shepherd. <laughs> Sounds like a good part. Shepherd Bill. <laughs> Okay, now, the next order of business is refreshments for the intermission. Chester, can we count on Dora making her hot cider again this year? Oh, yes, she's already laying in a supply of cinnamon sticks. What about your brownies, Shirley? They'll be here. If I don't eat them all first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of the programs. Good, then we're all set there. Uh, what about tickets? Um, You'd like to handle that this year, Joanna? No. Well, I mean, I will, but that's not why I was raising my hand. I had a question. Oh, what's that? Well, we've been sitting here for over an hour talking about publicity and refreshments and all that, but I haven't heard anyone mention what play we're going to do. Oh, we're going to do the same play we always do. Oh, what play is that? My Fair Lady. You do My Fair Lady every year? Since 1956. <laughs> I'm Henry Higgins. I'm Colonel Pickering. And we were hoping that this year you'd be Eliza. Me? Eliza Doolittle? But that's the lead. 
Clara Mosby usually does Eliza, but she can't get around much anymore. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I'm flattered. The trouble is, I don't really sing. Don't worry about that. We don't do the songs. <laughs> You do My Fair Lady without the music? Oh, wait till you see it. It really zips along. <laughs> what we do is Pygmalion. It's just that they prefer to call it My Fair Lady without the songs. Uh-huh. Uh, look, I... I don't mean to toy with tradition, but have you ever considered doing another play? Another what? play? No. Do you think anybody'd come? I'm sure they would. It's just that everybody knows My Fair Lady without the songs. They're used to it. Towards the end of the play, the whole audience usually says the lines right along with us. I can't think of another play they'd enjoy as much. Well... Say, what if Dick wrote us a play? What? Well, now, wait a minute. That could be a thought. Sure. Everybody in town knows Dick. Well, wait a minute. Can you imagine the excitement if we were doing a play by our own Dick Lowry? Hey, 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 hey! hey, hey. Oh, people! Dick doesn't write plays, he writes books. Oh, a play would be a lot easier to write than a book. It's lots less words. <laughs> That's true. Well, I could ask him, but I really wouldn't count on anything. That's the spirit. <laughs> oh, Dick, <laughs> Myrna, you better get busy changing the programs. It's going to be a play by Dick Loudon this year. Hey, 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 I didn't say that. I said I'd try. Well, how's he going to turn you down, Joanna? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Hey, everybody, look, it's Dick! Yeah. Thank you. You ready, you ready, honey? Joanna has something to ask you, Dick. Well, what's that? Uh, Dick, could I talk to you in private for a second? Joanna, if this has anything to do with community theater, I don't want to get involved. They want you to write a play. That's involved. <laughs> I wouldn't be asking if it wasn't for the fact that I happen to know you already have a play. Are you talking about The Girl from Manhattan? Yes. I, I wrote that 16 years ago. It's corny. I think it's wonderful. Well, of course, you think it's wonderful. I wrote it for you. The main character's name is Joanna. That has nothing to do with it. Besides, it's cute and funny. And like you said, you did write it for me, so I don't see why I shouldn't be able to give it to them. Look at their faces. <laughs> It would mean so much to them. They, they do love me. <laughs> Please, honey. All right, I, I don't like it, but uh, you can have it. I, on one condition. What's that? That I don't have to rewrite it, I don't have to direct it, and I don't even have to come to see it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, quiet, everybody. Oh. Director's trying to speak. <laughs> okay, who, who wants to audition now? I will. All right, Myrna, uh, what are you going to do for us? I'm going to do the same thing I did in My Fair Lady Without the Songs. There will now be a 10 minute intermission. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. That's a very important part of any play. Okay, who's who's next? George, you want to audition? Uh, no, I wanted to ask if I could make the sets. Does anyone else want to make the sets? It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Uh, Stephanie, I didn't know you were going to audition. Oh, well, I'm not really. I just realized that I've uh, probably seen a lot more real theater than most people here. I mean, I've seen My Fair Lady with the songs. <laughs> I've seen West Side Story. I've seen Camelot. Uh, that I saw in Switzerland, by the way, with subtitles. So I've really seen theater all over the world. Anyway, I'm here if you need me. <laughs> Thank you. I, I feel better already. <laughs> okay, who's next? Well, Jim, I guess it's you and me. We have an audition since 1956, <laughs> but we thought we'd do the same thing we did then. Fine. It's a duet. Are you ready? One, two. 
You like potato and I like tomato. You like potato and I like tomato. Potato, tomato, potato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. We didn't get that right. It was, it was fine. Anyone else? Would anybody mind if I go? What are you going to do for us? Well, I thought I'd do the first scene in The Girl from Manhattan where Joanne and her mother arrive in New York and see their apartment for the first time. Uh, you have someone to read with? Yeah. Shirley Dixon's going to read Joanna's mother. But I'm not auditioning. Fine. <laughs> you ready? Anytime you are. Okay. Um. Oh, Mother, look. Isn't this the most darling apartment you've ever seen? Yes, dear, it is. Oh, and look out the window. You can see all of New York. I can't tell you what it does for me to see you this happy. Are you as happy as I am? Yes, dear. I'm happier because I know you're so happy. <laughs> then this is truly a happy day. I'm gonna have to fix some of that. In my <laughs> thank, thank you both. Uh, anyone else? Well, and I'd just, uh, just like to thank you all for coming. I thought you were all, all very good. I just wish the play were as good as you were. Oh, oh that's nice. <laughs> well, I think I've seen enough to uh, base my decisions on. Uh, for those of you who get into the play but don't get the leads, uh, I want to remind you there's no such thing as a small part, just small actors. <laughs> okay, with, uh, with that in mind, <laughs> the cast is... Uh, woman number one, Myrna Peck. Congratulations, Myrna. Good choice. <laughs> Mr. Ackley, the Broadway producer, Chester Wanamaker. The mayor of New York, Jim Dixon. Oh, the mayor, huh? In the part of Joanna, Stephanie Vandercullen. <laughs> and in the part... <laughs> in the part of Joanna's mother, Joanna Loud. <laughs> so why don't we take a short 10-minute break and have some refreshments, and then we'll come back and read the play. Uh, honey, could I see you in the study for a second? Sure. Excuse us. Something wrong? Joanna's mother? What part did you think you'd get? Joanna. Joanna is a 22-year-old girl. But you wrote this play for me. It's my life story. No, it isn't. <laughs> Joanna in the play stars on Broadway and meets the mayor of New York. You never did those things. Look, Dick, you may not realize it, but in the back of my mind, I always had this fantasy that someday we'd do this play in some little theater, and I would play Joanna did. I mean, I'm the only one who tried out for the part, and I still didn't get it. <laughs> Stephanie didn't do anything. I know, but Stephanie was the only girl in her 20s out in that room. <laughs> uh, honey, I, I, would, I would do anything to give you this part. But uh, unfortunately, you're, you're just too darn old. <laughs> I, I mean, for the part, not, not in real life. <laughs> Fine, Dick. You're the director. What, what are you talking about? I don't want to discuss it anymore. We'll just go out there and put on our happily married faces, and no one will ever know that you broke my heart. I love the theater. Hi, Mom. Everything all right? Everything's fine. We're all ready, Dick. Fine, why doesn't everyone uh, have a seat? I'll read the, the stage directions. Okay, the girl from Manhattan, act one, scene one. The time is 1966. The setting is a small apartment in New York City. As the curtain goes up... Uh, actually, Dick, our curtain doesn't go up. It opens sideways. <laughs> okay, as the 
secret and open it sideways. A uh, beautiful girl, Joanna McKenzie, enters, followed by her surprisingly young mother. Where does it say that in the script? It, it doesn't. That's something else I'm going to have to fix. Should we start? Go ahead. Oh, Mother, look, isn't this the most darling apartment you've ever seen? Yes, dear, it is. Oh, and look out the window. You can see all of New York. I can't tell you what it does for me to see you this happy. Are you as happy as I am? Yes, dear. I'm happier because I know you're so happy. Well, that's uh, one page. Um, I think we're, uh, we're due for a break. Uh, Joanna, could I, uh, could I see you in the study? Which Joanna are you referring to? The Joanna who begged me to do this play. <laughs> Excuse us. <clears throat> Something wrong? Joanna's mother is supposed to be the sweetest, kindest, most sympathetic character in the play. So? You're playing her like Vampira. <laughs> Now, look, I, I made a perfectly logical casting decision. Now, I, I want you to go out there, stop acting like a child, and do it right. And what if I don't? Then you will never work in this town again. <laughs> Honey, you better hurry up. We're going to be late. Dick? Yeah, George? The play opens tomorrow night. And I've only got one more thing to do on the set. I just thought I'd check with you first. Well, what's that? Well, it says you're supposed to see New York out the window. What does New York look like? <laughs> well, George, it's, it's one of the largest cities in the world. You know, it has uh, rivers and bridges and hundreds of tall buildings, millions of lights. Well, maybe I'll just put a curtain on the window. <laughs> All right, Dick, no more fooling around. I've got a major date tonight. I've got to have your car. I'm sorry, Joanna, I need the car to go to rehearsal. You're not using my truck. Name your price. There's nothing you have that I want. Don't give me that. You love my hamburgers. What will it be? Free meals? How many? OK, I want all my meals for a month. That's stupid. I'll give you one cheeseburger. <laughs> OK, I want all my meals for a week. I'll give you one cheeseburger and French fries. OK, I'll take one cheeseburger, French fries, and dessert. I'll give you one cheeseburger, French fries, and your own booth. And dessert. No dessert. One play on the jukebox. Deal. Keys. <laughs> I won. <laughs> OK, I'm ready. All right, let me get my stuff and we can go. I'll be in the car. Aren't you going to wait for me? Fine, you're the director. <laughs> Joanna, why don't you close the door and let's talk? What? Because I don't want to go to our last rehearsal with the two of us mad at each other. I'll let you know how it went. Joanna, <laughs> please come down here. Look, let's be honest. The last two weeks haven't been great. I've been doing the best I can. I, I know you have. I, I made a mistake. I should never have cast you as Joanna's mother. Well, at least we agree on something. I mean, you were right to begin with. The, the problem is you're, you're just too young. I am? Well, don't you think that's the problem? Well, sure, but I thought you said I was too old to be Joanna. Well, you are, but you're also too young to be her mother. Well, what am I, your aunt? <laughs> what if you were her sister? Her sister? Yeah. Wait a minute. Would you only be doing this to make me happy? <laughs> no, no, no. No. <laughs> Would it? Well, yes, but isn't it going to look a little funny going to the last rehearsal and telling everyone that now I'm Joanna's sister? No, I'll just tell everyone that this kind of thing happens all the time in the theater. Does it? In practically every play ever done. I think uh, I read one time that uh, up until opening night, it was the Queen and I. Well, I have to admit, I like the idea. But wouldn't that throw the whole play off? No, uh, instead of Stephanie saying mother, she'll just say sister. 
Well, I am so much happier. Well, then that's frosting on the cake. Oh. <laughs> so tell me, how did the audition go? I was so nervous, but I think I was very good. The producer kept smiling at me. Dick, would you like a cup of cider? Oh, thanks. How's it going? What's going? Beautiful women trying out. Pretty good. <laughs> oh, sis, do you really think I'll get it? Well, Joanna, <laughs> not many girls land the lead in a Broadway show their first month in New York. But whether or not you get it, I just want you to know that your father and sister will always be proud of you. <laughs> I'll get it. The producer, Mr. Ackley, and the mayor of New York. <laughs> Come in. What a surprise. Mr. Mayor, I don't believe you've met the young actress I discovered. This is Joanna McKenzie and her sister, Sis McKenzie. <laughs> well, I've certainly been hearing a lot about you. You've raised a fine sister. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Could I get anyone a sandwich or a cold drink? A sandwich sounds good to me. <laughs> well, then, if you'll excuse me, I'll just go into the kitchen and make some. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Ackley, won't you have a seat? Oh, thank you. <laughs> this certainly is a cute apartment you've got here. Dick, thanks. I decorated it myself. Joanna, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be making sandwiches in the kitchen. <laughs> I've got a minute before I go back on. Oh, Dick, this is awful. Yeah. I never should have let you make me Joanna's sister. I've ruined everything. No, no, you haven't. How can you say that? They're all laughing at me. At least they're laughing at something. <laughs> I've made us both look like fools. And you were so sweet to try to change everything. Can you ever forgive me? Honey, I love you. Of course I forgive you. Oh, Dick. Shh. Sorry. <laughs> look, the, the play's almost over. Just uh, go back up there and... Uh, do the best you can to get through it. But, Dick, I can't go back up there and let people think you wrote something that sounds this stupid. Joanna, there you are. You're supposed to be on stage. You missed your cue. Oh, great. I'll be right there. Honey, don't worry. I'm going to get us both out of this. What are you going to do? <laughs> Joanna! How, how's it going, Dick? H haven't you been watching? <laughs> no, I stepped out for a drink of water and to pick up some things at the market. <laughs> say your sister was? Well, I thought she was in the kitchen. But she doesn't seem to be there right now. Maybe she went for a walk. You know, I think you're right. In fact, I think I hear someone on the sidewalk now. <laughs> no, I was wrong. So, where did you say your sister was? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> Sorry, but we were out of mustard, so I had to make some. Here. Oh, thank you. Sis, I have the most wonderful news. Mr. Ackley has given me the lead in his new show, and he's asked me to marry him. Well, that's wonderful, dear. <laughs> and now I've got something to tell you. You do? <laughs> yes. I hope you'll be as happy as I am when I tell you that I'm not really your sister. I'm your mother. <laughs> My mother? Yes. I just pretended to be your sister so we would be close. And now that I know we always will be, there's no need to hide my true identity anymore. Uh. <laughs> well, sis? Mom? I don't 
don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Let's just go out to dinner. Okay. Yes. Everyone into the mayor's limousine. And isn't this a wonderful day? If I'd known we were going out to dinner, I wouldn't have eaten that sandwich. Is that it? I think so. Well, that's the dumbest play I've ever seen. You want to save the program? Man, the sandwich is good. Knock. Who's there? Jim and Chester. Jim and Chester who? Hi, hi Dick. Dick. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were a knock-knock joke. Oh? Which one did you think we were? <laughs> no, ne never, never mind. Never mind who? <laughs> no, for, forget the joke. Well, what, uh, what can I do for you? Well, as you probably know, Thanksgiving is almost upon us. Yeah, I, I think I heard something about that. Every year, this town has a Thanksgiving Day parade. About 30 of us put it together. We get the Chamber of Commerce to be in it, the Boy Scouts, some of the townspeople dress like pilgrims. We even have a float featuring Plymouth Rock. Although it's not the real Plymouth Rock. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Oh, but don't say anything, because not everybody knows that. <laughs> anyway, you can probably guess what we're leading up to. You want me to be a grand marshal or something? No, we asked Bob Hope. <laughs> if he can't do it, it's going to be Lester Hodges. He's the only one in town with a convertible. We wanted you to be parade director. Isn't this kind of late? I mean, Thanksgiving, you know, is next week. Well, the parade runs itself, really. We just need someone to be in charge. We thought since you didn't have a regular job, you'd have time to do it. Well, as surprising as this may sound, I'm, I'm busy working on a book right now. You are? Gee, Dick, we were counting on you. I'm sorry. I could... Who, uh, who did it last year? Roger Bishop, but he wants to be a pilgrim this year. I could do it. <laughs> what did you say, George? Oh, I was just saying I could do it. Well, now, there's somebody we never would have thought of. <laughs> See, George is, is a great choice. I mean, he's lived here all his life. He knows the town, and I'll make sure he has it. Well, what do you think, Chester? Well, the parade director doesn't really have to do anything. That's true. He just has to be able to wave. I'm sure George could do that. Well, there's sounds of that. George, you're our new parade director. Me? Congratulations. We know you won't take the job lightly. Did you ever see a real Thanksgiving Day parade, Dick? Uh, when we lived in New York, I, I saw the Macy's parade. Oh, you're in for a treat. The whole town looks forward to it every year. The only drawback is that the people who work on the parade miss out on Thanksgiving dinner. We do? Well, after all that hard work, there just isn't time to put into a big fancy meal. Well, maybe I'll just have dinner with Bob Hope. <laughs> George, 
but I don't think Bob Hope is coming. Well, why don't you all get together, you know, have a, have a group meal like one of your potlucks? Well, we would, but they use the fellowship hall to feed the poor. And we can't think of another place big enough to hold all of us. Well, the Stratford's big enough. Why don't you meet here? Do you mean that, Dick? Sure, we'll make our own potluck. You all bring a dish and we'll cook the turkey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, that's great. Thanks a lot, Dick. Boy, this is a good trip. We got a parade director and a Thanksgiving dinner all in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, let's go tell Joanna the news. Joanna, you'll never believe it. Jim and Chester came by looking for someone to direct the Thanksgiving Day Parade, and guess who they picked? Dick? Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Oh, uh, thanks. Actually, they picked George. Oh, George, that's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to go tell Kirk. Boy, is he going to be surprised. This is going to be a proud day for the Stratford. I get to direct a parade, and then everyone gets to come over here for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, I invited some people over for Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's what I heard. Who did you invite? Uh, just the people on the parade committee. How many people is that? Um, 30. You invited 30 people to Thanksgiving dinner without even asking me? Honey, don't be silly. You're invited, too. <laughs> yeah. it, it wasn't oh. intentional. It's just that... Uh, Jim and Chester were talking about how nobody on the on the parade committee ever gets a chance to have Thanksgiving dinner, and I thought it was a nice thing to do. And besides, everybody's bringing something, so all we have to worry about is uh, the turkey. Do you know how many turkeys it takes to feed 30 people? Uh, actually, it's, it's 30 couples. 60 people? Um, unless they bring their kids. Oh, God, Dick, how many people are we talking about? Honey, you're, you're right. You know, uh, thinking about this some more, it wasn't such a great idea. I'm, I'm going to call it off. Wait, wait a minute. You can't uninvite people. Well, why not? Because it's rude and thoughtless. And it'll sound like it was my idea. Face it, we're stuck. And on my parents' first visit here. They're coming all the way from Ohio expecting a nice little family dinner. Honey, I, I didn't mean to ruin Thanksgiving. Congratulations, Dick. You have ruined Thanksgiving. <laughs> How did I ruin your Thanksgiving? By inviting the whole town over for dinner. Every Thanksgiving, everyone who didn't want to cook would come to the Minutemen. Look, I, I'm sorry I messed up everybody's holiday, but inviting those people seemed like a, a decent gesture. I mean, Thanksgiving is, is a time for giving, and, and this year, we're giving. Well, thanks. <laughs> hi, hi, is, is your mommy there? Could, could I talk to her, please? Stephanie, would you take the stuffing out of this turkey while I put another one in the oven? Sure. How do I do that? Oh, just a second, I'll show you. Here, like this. Huh? There. Done? Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, this is Dick Loudon. It's a Stratford Inn. Yeah, I'm calling about uh, Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. Yes, we're, we're looking forward to it, too. Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just trying to coordinate what everyone is bringing. Well, wh what we need are potatoes. No, not, not, not tater tots. <laughs> we, we were thinking mashed. You're right, the, the holidays are a pain. <laughs> but can we count on you? Great, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Uh, uh, Stephanie, if you want to help, maybe you could wash those turkeys. Hi, everybody. Oh, it sure smells good in here. Really? The smell of turkey seems to have lost its thrill for me. Oh, uh, Dick, I wanted to show you my plans for the parade route. Oh, fine. I've given this a lot of thought over the past week, and this is what I finally come up with. Follow my finger. The parade starts here at the top of Main Street, goes along here, along here, along here, along here, and here's where it ends. The end of Main Street. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I can hear those bands playing already, George. <laughs> I'd better make copies. I don't want anybody getting lost. Stephanie, what are you doing? You said to wash the turkeys. I didn't mean give them a shampoo. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. 
I guess I misunderstood. I'm not feeling very well. What's the matter? I don't know. My head hurts. I feel woozy. And looking at all these dead turkeys makes me want a Ralph. <laughs> all right, if you're really not feeling well, maybe you better go upstairs. Good. Uh, Joanna, how long has this turkey been in here? A couple of hours. Why? I don't think it's cooking. You're kidding. Oh, Mel, I hope it's not the oven. I don't know what could be wrong with it. Maybe it's sick of turkey. <laughs> turkey man! Oh, no, how many more are there? These are the last two. Everybody's looking forward to tomorrow. My wife said anyone who'd cook Thanksgiving dinner for 94 people must be a saint. No, she said they must be insane. <laughs> Honey, do you, do you remember anything about a, a group of 12 from Arizona? Oh, that's right. I completely forgot. No, no, no. We, we didn't forget. We're, we're looking forward to it. As luck would have it, we, we are serving Thanksgiving dinner. Guys, we're going to need more turkey. Say no more. Turkey men to the rescue. <laughs> Goodbye. See you tomorrow. I don't believe this. We're going to have over 100 people here for Thanksgiving dinner. Hi. Remember those, those nights in Manhattan when we used to sit in our little apartment and think about how great it would be to someday own a place like this and how warm it would be if it was always filled with friends and family? Yeah. Well, we were wrong. <laughs> How much over? 102. 102 over normal? No, your temperature is 102. Oh, that's a little better. I still think you should really be in bed. Oh, I hate being in bed with the flu. It makes me feel sick. <coughs> I'd rather be here around people. <coughs> Stephanie, you can't just lie here in the middle of all the guests. Oh, you're right. I wouldn't want them to see me like this. I'll be in the kitchen if you need me for anything. I really do hate to leave you with all of this work. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> oh, Joanna, if you get a chance, could you bring me up something to make me feel better? Sure, what do you need? Harper's Bazaar. <laughs> Maybe I'll bring you something for your flu, too. Whatever. Yep, it's the old folks. <laughs> How are you? Oh. I didn't know it was raining. Oh, I guess when you live in a big mansion like this, you don't hear the rain, huh? <laughs> Dad, this isn't a mansion. It's just an inn. <laughs> Here, let me take your coat. Ah, thank you. How was your trip? Oh, fine. How come you're not dressed? Oh, she doesn't have to be dressed. They're living the life of Riley now that they're retired. <laughs> Dad. We are not retired. Now you know your father. He's just teasing you. <laughs> Nervous. Don't tease. I'm sorry I look like this, but things have been a little hectic around here. Our caretaker's gone, one of the ovens is broken, and now my maid's sick. Oh, the problems of the rich. Nervous. <laughs> oh, darling, your place is even more beautiful than in the pictures. You think so? I really do. I can't tell you how much we've looked forward to this little get-together. Well, that's something else I have to explain. I really hate to tell you this because I'm afraid you won't understand. Nonsense, were your parents? We're having some extra people over for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. I'm sure it could be helped. Well, Irvis, why don't you take our suitcases up to the room? We do have a room, don't we? <laughs> of course you do. Don't be silly. You're my parents. You have our most special room. Room six. Well, six is a nice number. <laughs> Look, I know this isn't turning out the way we planned. It's okay. We'll make the best of it. <laughs> do you need some help in the kitchen? Oh, yes, I do, Mother. And you thought you weren't going to have to cook this year. <laughs> Who's the jerk that parked in the middle of the driveway? Hello, Richard. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, Dad. When, when did you get here? We pulled in a couple of minutes ago. Nice car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, you 
you doing here? I thought you were at the parade. It's been rained out. Oh, no. How's George taking it? Well, not too well. Last time I saw him, he was walking down Main Street kicking puddles. <laughs> What's that? Stephanie's got the flu. I was just taking this up to her. On top of that, my parents arrived. I haven't slept all night, and I've still got two more turkeys to cook. Well, let me take the tray while I tell you my news. What? Well, since the parade's been rained out, no one really has anything to do, so... Don't tell me they're coming early. Yeah. How early? Hello? <laughs> do this to me. The food isn't ready and I'm not even dressed. Honey, calm down. There's a way out of this. What is it? I have no idea. Oh. Why don't you take Stephanie's tray up to her and bring me something to wear? I'll go hide in the kitchen. Did I hear Dick? Yeah. The parade got rained out and everybody's come early. Oh, dear. And look at you. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Here are the dishes you asked for. Good, you got here just in time. Uh, can I use your dishwasher? You mean they're dirty? Well, some of them, they're mixed in together. <laughs> Who's the senior citizen? Kirk, this is my mother, Florine McKenna. Mom, this is our neighbor, Kirk Devane. How do you do? Fine. So you want to take off your rings and give me a hand? <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Kirk. Hi, Dick. Hi. Nope, here you go. Dick, that's pants and a sweater. It's Thanksgiving. Honey, please go upstairs and bring me my yellow dress. Joanna, you look so pasty and yellow. <laughs> Just bring me a dress. Maybe something in red. Fine. Hello? Dishes? Oh, hi, Dick. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, hi, guys. Where's Joanna? Still working on those turkeys? Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, you might say I'm helping her with the dressing. <laughs> I see your guests have arrived. Uh, yeah. I guess you don't have time to introduce me to anyone. Oh, uh, don't be silly. Everybody, this is my father-in-law, Irvis McKenna. Dad, this is everybody. <laughs> Mom, could you clear some space so I could put this down? It's okay. I can handle this until you get back. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Put on your coats. It's the rainmaker. Be quiet and wash, Kirk. Mom, this is our caretaker, George Utley. George, my mother. Oh, it's nice to meet you. If I seem sad, it's because it just poured on the greatest day of my life. I'm sorry. I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> George, why don't you go out there and be with your friends? They'll take your mind off your troubles. Maybe you're right. Hi, Dick. Hi, George. Feeling low, huh? Yeah. Well, how's this? Oh, fine. Where are the shoes and stockings? You, you didn't say you needed them. I didn't say I needed 100 people for Thanksgiving, either, but you thought of that. <laughs> right back. Now, is there anything else you can think of that isn't readily apparent to me? Her hair's a mess. <laughs> All right, a brush and comb. Maybe a little lipstick, you know? A color. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah, me again. Just, just keep mingling. Dinner should be ready in just a few hours. Oh, good. George, come meet Joanna's father. Howdy. George Utley, Irvish McKenna. Joanna's told us a lot about you. Oh? George was in charge of our parade today. Oh, you must be devastated. <laughs> Everybody. Hi, everybody. Why don't you come down and join us? I can't. <coughs> I'm sick. Oh. Oh. Well, Stephanie, this is Joanna's father. Herbert McKenna. It's nice to meet you. Stephanie Vanderkellen. I usually look a lot better than this. That's yeah. true. <laughs> oh, Dick, would you take my tray down for me? Uh, in, in a minute. Well, goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> The last one. You're a terrific dishwasher, Flo. Thanks. No, I'm serious. If inflation ever eats up your pension, come work for me. <laughs> well, 
I hope this is everything. So do I. Now, everybody get out so I can get dressed. Uh, come on, Flo. I'll introduce you to the others. Uh -oh. Let's go mingle with the pumpkins. <laughs> Vermont so far. You haven't really seen anything but Joanna's kitchen. Oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Sorry, Dick. I didn't know Joanna was dressing in the kitchen. Oh, no. Is there someplace else I could get a drink of water? Oh, I'll get you one. You want me to get that, Dick? Uh, yeah, thanks. Hello, this is the Stratford Inn. Can I help you? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, 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 dear. Okay, I'll tell everybody. Hey, everybody, the river's rising. They say if the storm keeps up, there could be a flood. Well, we all know what that means. John, come on. No time for water now, Dick. There could be a flood. What? Yeah, the river's rising. We have to go. We have to start sandbagging our homes. Come on, everybody. Hurry, time's a-wasting. Wait a minute. What, what about dinner? No time for dinner, Dick. Maybe we can do it next year. But what, what about the 14 turkey? <laughs> I'd better go see if I can help. Wait, wait a minute, George. What, what about our place? Uh, we're okay, Dick. We're on high ground. Well, everybody... Here I come at last. Oh, perfect. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, honey. What happened? Where is everyone? Honey, uh, don't, don't get upset. They, they had to leave. What do you mean they had to leave? I just spent seven days cooking 14 turkeys. Where the hell did they go? <laughs> the river's rising. They had to go and sandbag their homes. Oh. Feel better now? No, this is terrible. If you're worried about the food, I'll take it off your hands. You're not getting our food. <laughs> Do you suppose there's any way we could take all this food around everybody? I don't know. We could try. Well, then let's do it. You and Dad start carving. Mom and I will start dishing up the stuffing. Okay. We'll make up turkey dinners and take them around to the whole town. What a fine idea. And I'll be right behind you hustling soft drinks. <laughs> fed some Red Cross workers who I'm sure had already eaten. <laughs> Stephanie, how are you feeling? Better. <laughs> well, it stopped raining. It looks like everything's going to be okay. Boy, what a day. Mom, Dad, we really appreciate you helping us out. We know it wasn't your idea of a great Thanksgiving. Are you kidding? It's the best Thanksgiving we ever had. It, it was? Yeah. I feel like we really got into the spirit of the season today. I think we all realized we have a lot to be thankful for. And with that in mind, let's eat. <laughs> My appetite's back. Oh, mine too. I'm a star. Oh, no. <laughs> What's the matter? I just realized we don't have anything to eat. We gave all the food away. You carved all those turkeys and you didn't hoard any for us? <laughs> what does it take to teach you a lesson? What we did today is what Thanksgiving is all about. It's also about eating yourself into a coma. <laughs> Who's going to feed us? Well, let's go look in the kitchen. Maybe we can scrounge up something. Excuse me. Yes? I've got a group of people from Arizona on my bus. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. I know it's late, but do you still have their rooms? Of course we still have them. Okay, folks, come on in. We're surprised you made it through the storm. Me too. Who's touch and go there for a while? Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for holding our rooms for us. Oh, you're quite welcome. Unfortunately, we had an emergency, and so we're not going to be able to feed you Thanksgiving dinner after all. That's okay. We stopped and bought burgers on the way. <gasps> Is this ironic? Here we are on Thanksgiving with no food, and who should show up at our doorstep but a tribe of American Indians? I guess the next thing is you offer to share your food with us. I don't know. The last time we did this, we got into a lot of trouble. <laughs>
by mistake, but I didn't read any of it. All I looked at was one thing from a record club. I'm really sorry about it. Well, it's okay, I guess. So, are you going to join the record club? I doubt it. Wise move, considering the size of your electric bill. Kirk, there's smoke coming from your cafe. Ooh, guess it's time to flip those burgers. People, go back in. It's not a fire. It's just a little smoke. <laughs> Dick, I picked up a copy of the Times for you. Did you get my loofah sponges? Yeah. Thanks. Loofah sponges? It's beauty night. I set aside one night a week to maintain myself. What do you use them for? Well, I use them to, to scrub away dead, dry skin. Do you want to try one? No. No, I, uh, I have someone come in once a week to do that. <laughs> so, uh, how are things in town? Great. I ran into Mrs. Wanamaker at the drugstore, and she invited the two of us to a community potluck tonight. Well, maybe sometime we'll do that. I thought we'd do that tonight. What's a potluck? Oh, it's a big mass dinner where people bring food they wouldn't serve at home. You know, <laughs> down into a dingy church basement and sit around on folding chairs and eat off paper plates. That sounds horrible. It sounds horrible the way he describes it. I think it sounds like fun. Well, I always say no one should miss out on one of our potlucks. What's that casserole you've got there, Joanna? That looks pretty exotic. Tuna. Oh. Well, I always say can't have a good potluck without four or five tuna casseroles. I'll put it with the others. Here, let me take your coats. Oh, thank you. Oh, Shirley, come out here. I want you to meet my wife. Shirley, this is Dick and Joanna Loudon. How do you do? It's nice to meet you. I'll put these on the table over there. I feel I know you already. I've heard so much about you. Oh, uh, really? Well, you can't live in a town this size and own the Stratford Inn and not have people talk about you. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> what do you do, Dick? <laughs> I'm, I'm a writer. A writer? Isn't that interesting? Where are you from? New York. The Big Apple, huh? <laughs> Shirley, could you help me for a minute? Excuse me. It's so nice to finally meet the people I've heard so much about. <laughs> How does it feel to be a celebrity? Uh, fine. <laughs> well, are you having fun so far? Boy, I am. <laughs> I think it's just wonderful the way the whole community gets together like this. There seems to be so much warmth and fellowship. Okay, everybody, dig in. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not so much for warmth and fellowship. Hey, Dick, you should write a book about our potluck dinners. You could call it Vittles of Vermont. Right. I have never seen so much food in all my life. It doesn't it all look wonderful? <laughs> can't wait to go back for seconds. I'm going to have to get some of these recipes. Uh, pardon me. I'm a bit confused. Oh? What's wrong? Well, the women are all going into the kitchen, and the men are all staying out here. Hey, yeah. Why aren't we all eating dinner together? Oh, we never eat together. Why not? I don't know. It's just a tradition. A tradition? Yes, you see, when this all started back in the 1800s, the farmers used to come into town to sell their crops. Women would cook up some food, bring it over to the men, then go back to the house and go on about their business. And it stayed pretty much the same all these years. The men sit out here and talk about hunting and fishing. The women go in the kitchen and talk about whatever it is women talk about. Yeah, we like it. But do the women like it? Oh, and they haven't heard any complaints. Women feel at home in the kitchen, don't they? But that, 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 that's, that's... That's, that's very interesting. Your, your tradition, I mean. Oh, the important thing is everybody has a good time. <laughs> Dick, I don't think I like this. What, what are you talking about? Well, I'm not going to be packed off to eat in some hot, steamy kitchen while you sit out here with the men. Honey. You don't want to go, do you? Joanna, you know I don't like that kind of stuff. But, Dick, it's a chance to make friends. And it's so New England. No, it's not. We had potluck dinners in New York, and I didn't like them there either. You never want to go anywhere. Yes, I do. No, you don't. And you know why? Because you don't like people. 
I, I do, too, like people. No, you don't. You'd rather sit around in a torn T-shirt watching television and swilling beer. I never do that. I certainly hope not. Look, Dick, if you don't want to go, we won't go. I'll just call Mrs. Wanamaker and tell her to count us out. You don't have to do that. You're just saying that to pacify me. That's true. Well, I'm not going to go anywhere just to be pacified. If we're both not going to enjoy it, I think we should just forget it. Dora? Joanna, I just talked to Dick, and we can't wait to come tonight. <laughs> oh, Dick, look, isn't this charming? Look at the dishes and the people in the room. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> Ready to go? Now, come on, honey. You promise to at least pretend to have a good time. I will. Joanna! Oh, come on in. I'm so glad you and Dick could make it. Well, it was nice of you to invite us. This is awful. What? I can't stand to read about current events anymore. It's just one depressing thing after another. Uh, what are you reading about? Leather jumpsuits. <laughs> Everyone says they're in this year, and it just makes me sick. Well, it's a brutal world, Stephanie, but we can't let it keep us from our dusting. <laughs> right. Morning. Dick, I just did something by accident, and I feel terrible about it. What is it? I opened all of your mail. You opened all of this by accident? It was put in my box.